All right, welcome back. Today we're continuing our Let's Learn ABA series with Extinction. Extinction is one of our behavior change principles. It's a very powerful behavior change agent, and you need to know it regardless of if you're an RBT or a BCBA. It's something you're going to do almost every single day in practice. So we're going to go through it step by step, break down in simple terms that apply to your practice and your exam. As always, check out btexamreview.com for RBT materials and behavioranalyststudy.com for BCBA materials. Like and subscribe. Questions, comments, let us know. Work hard, study hard, let's learn ABA. So extinction is withholding reinforcement for a previously reinforced behavior. Most of you might already know that, but we just want to repeat and repeat and repeat until it is burned into our brain. Reinforcement, punishment, and extinction, those three things just need to be imprinted in your brain, so when you hear extinction, the only thing you think is withholding reinforcement. We're going to define extinction. We're going to give extinction procedures, effects of extinction, and then talk about resistance to extinction. So what is extinction? Again, withholding reinforcement for previously reinforced behavior. It is not a punishment procedure, but it does work to decrease behavior. The intervention of extinction does decrease behavior but it is not punishment. We have to separate those two things out. They're two very distinct behavior change principles. If you're going to do extinction, it must occur 100% of the time or as close as possible. 100% of the time is unrealistic in most cases because nobody's perfect, but you need to get to 98, 99, 97% of the time if you really want extinction to be truly effective. The target behavior no longer produces reinforcement, and that's what it comes down to. A behavior that used to receive something or get rid of something now no longer gains or gets rid of that thing. So that target behavior is no longer reinforced. Ignore it is not always extinction. So the idea, well, we'll just ignore it. Well, it's function-based. So you can ignore maybe attention-based behavior, but if the behavior is to gain an item, then you're going to be not ignoring the behavior, you just won't be giving the item. It's one mistake that a lot of people make, right? That extinction is just, well, we'll just ignore it. It's not the case, right? We need to go based on function and based on that reinforcing uh, stimuli. Whatever's reinforcing the behavior, we have to withhold, whether it's attention, an item, escape, whatever it might be. Extinction is not forgetting a behavior. So the behavior is not going away. It's just not receiving reinforcement. Extinction is not response blocking. You have to let the person have the opportunity to engage in the behavior in order to put it on extinction. If you're blocking the behavior from occurring, you can't put it on extinction. So response blocking is not extinction. They're two different things. And then extinction is not non-contingent reinforcement. It's withholding reinforcement for a response that just occurred. So how can we do this? Well, behavior is maintained by positive, negative, and automatic reinforcement. So it's your job, if you're the behavior analyst, to identify that maintaining reinforcer. And then your technicians, or even you, will start extinction procedures based on the maintaining stimuli. So if positive reinforcement is what we're looking at, then whatever behavior you're targeting no longer produces reinforcement. If it's negative reinforcement, then the behavior you're targeting no longer escapes or removes the aversive. If you're looking at automatic reinforcement, then the aversive sensory stimulation is not removed. So, for example, what would qualify as automatic reinforcement extinction? Remember, automatic reinforcement just simply means a loan or a sensory feeling. So, A, Jane rips up her homework but is not allowed to leave the table. Well, this is socially mediated. It seems like Jane is being is, is not allowed to escape. Right. So this is seems like it's maintained by negative reinforcement, not automatic. B, John asked for a cookie, but is not given one. So John's behavior produces cookies in the past, but this time he's not given one. He doesn't receive positive reinforcement. C, Greg uses a Q-tip, but cannot remove the earwax. Good. This is automatic at extinction, right? Because one person is doing it, but the aversive sensory stimulation is not removed. So using that Q-tip is now being put on extinction because it's no longer removing the earwax. So that's that's extinction in a nutshell. Identify the reinforcer maintaining the behavior and then cease to deliver that reinforcer. 
What are some secondary effects of extinction? These are predictable side effects. So we know these can happen, meaning we need to make the team aware of possible effects. Extinction burst is the one we all know and love. It's a predictable temporary increase in the behavior at the start of extinction. Extinction bursts are good because it signals to us that we've identified the right reinforcer, right? We're withholding the right reinforcement. As extinction bursts occur, we need to really, really try our best to deliver extinction with fidelity constantly. Spontaneous recovery is the reemergence of a previously extinct behavior. So we put a behavior on extinction. It's gone down, it's gone down, it's gone. Three months later, suddenly it reappears, even though we haven't reinforced it. It happens. It's predictable. What do you do? Well, you just avoid reinforcing it, and it's going to go away again. Resurgence is a little different. So resurgence actually occurs when an alternative behavior has been taught or starts receiving reinforcement instead of the old behavior. And then if that alternative behavior stops receiving reinforcement, then the old behavior start to creep up again. And when you think about it, it makes sense because the person has to engage in some form of behavior to meet their needs. So if you've taught an alternative behavior and that alternative behavior is no longer producing reinforcement, well, they're going to have to find a different behavior. So it's very important that if you're teaching alternative behaviors, you make sure you're reinforcing the alternative behaviors. If not, resurgence could occur. Two ethical considerations amongst many, right? Extinction can lead to emotional outburst. So extinction can evoke rage, whining, crying, and extinction can lead to aggression. So it can include escape behavior, hitting, kicking. These are potential side effects of extinction. You have to let everybody on the team know this could happen and we expect it to happen. And when you notice it happening, continue, 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 continue implementing extinction. So variables affecting resistance to extinction. So resistance to extinction essentially means how long does it take for extinction to kick in on a behavior, okay? So behavior that continues to happen even though it's on extinction are said to be resistant to the procedure. Intermittent reinforcement produces more resistance to extinction. A behavior that receives reinforcement less is more likely to be resistance to extinction because you've got to withhold reinforcement much more often and a lot more times to actually meet the schedule. Resistance to extinction is greater when motivation is higher. That should be obvious. If the motivation to gain the consequence of the reinforcer is higher, it's going to be a lot harder to keep that behavior down and from occurring. How often a behavior produced reinforcement in the past influences resistance to extinction? So if this behavior has been going on for years, you're, you might be in for a long, long ride. If this is a brand new behavior, you've got a lot better chance at quickly getting rid of it. How often extinction is applied? Extinction should be applied always, 100% of the time. And then the response effort. So if there's a high response effort and and it no longer produces reinforcement, that behavior might just stop. But if the response effort is really low and it takes nothing to engage in the response, it might be a little more difficult, right? So you have to consider all these variables when implementing extinction. Okay, What's the reinforcement schedule? How long has this behavior been occurring? What's the effort? And what's the motivation? Considering these things are going to make your procedures better. They're going to make them more effective. So effective extinction. Well, we're going to withhold all reinforcers maintaining the problem behavior, meaning all reinforcement. If you can't withhold all reinforcement, don't do extinction. You're going to withhold reinforcement consistently. Consistency is so, so key. You're going to combine extinction with other procedures. This is also key. We never want just a, a simple treatment plan where we're using just extinction, right? Just reinforcement. Let's combine all these different interventions, okay, and make this these things more powerful. And with extinction, especially, you're decreasing something. You're taking something away. You need to go ahead and teach something in replace of that. In place of that, you want to inform learners that the behavior is being put on extinction. Hey, I'm no longer going to give you attention when you do this, or I'm no longer going to give you a uh, hug when you do this. Plan for the aggression. That way you're not surprised. Include stakeholders in extinction. So if everybody is on the same page, it's going to be a lot more effective. That way, behavior is not extinct in one environment and being reinforced in another. You want to teach replacement behaviors always, always, always when you decrease something. And then you want to maintain extinction when behaviors are gone. So even when the behavior is gone, even if it comes back, extinction should always, always, always still be in place. 
When should you not use extinction? If the behavior is harmful, this should be a no-brainer. You're not going to ignore a behavior that could harm somebody or somebody else, right? You're not going to put that on extinction. You need to maybe find another way. If all sources of reinforcement cannot be stopped, don't use extinction because what's going to happen is that person is going to seek out the reinforcement that can't be stopped. If a quick reduction in behavior is required, don't use extinction. Extinction isn't always quick, and you can't guarantee it's going to be quick. And then if others around are imitating the target behavior, don't use extinction. You need to find something else to use. Awesome. That's Let's Learn ABA today for extinction. If you have questions, let us know. Please like and subscribe. btexamreview.com and then behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. Work hard, study hard. We will see you soon.